Mailbag time here on the Cleveland Browns Report, answering questions asked during our live show, which airs every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. So make sure to tune in next week to get your question on screen as corn dogs, Jackie. Corn dogs for all these people. I saw on Twitter that that the, I saw on Twitter that the Browns should go after Mike Williams. Thoughts? That is an interesting thought. Um, Mike Williams unfortunately had his season cut short due to another injury, and that's sort of been the on and off issue for Williams all of his NFL career. But Mike Williams had that breakout 2021 season, came at a good time as he was, I believe, entering the last year of his contract, got the franchise tag momentarily, if I remember correctly, and then he signed, I think, a three-year contract. So I think he still has one more year under contract, although I wouldn't be blown away if the Chargers decide to move on from Williams. If we're thinking about receivers that mesh well with Deshaun Watson, it's the big body jump ball kind of guy. My concern is there is a track record of Mike Williams missing a lot of football. And availability is the number one ability, in my opinion. So I would have some hesitancy to signing Mike Williams if the Chargers do release him, which has to happen. I definitely, I definitely don't want to trade a lot for Mike Williams. If you can get him for a seventh-round pick, sure, why not? But if it's going to cost you an arm and a leg and that's your marquee free agent signing, I would go look other places. But let me know. Would you add Mike Williams, whether it's via trade or he's released by the Chargers? Chime in for me down below in the comment section. Ryan Chowdhury, what's going on, dude? Do we sign Jacoby Ford or Joe Flacco next to Jacoby Ford? Jacoby Brissett or Joe Flacco next year as the backup or stick with DTR? That's a great question, Ryan. I would say stick with Dorian Thompson Robinson. Joe Flacco is doing amazing stuff right now. I don't know if he's interested after year 16 to come back and serve as a backup, right? He's a pretty competitive dude. I think he wants to go somewhere where, I mean, he definitely wanted to be on a roster this year, but I don't know if he wants to be a backup, like, guaranteed. You know what I mean? Like, at least with Zach Wilson, the Jets, there was a little bit of like, a, hey, we kind of need you. We don't really know what we have in Wilson. With Watson, that's not really an option. So I would say stick with DTR. Don't panic. It's not like DTR was bad, by the way, in the Broncos game or in the Steelers game. He looked like a rookie QB who was honestly just getting better and better by the game. So I would lean towards number 17. Joshua Miller with a $5 super chat. Week 18, wild card spot locked up, but have a chance for the division title. Do we go all out for the division or rest for first round due to injury? But I think in this hypothetical that Josh is asking, the Browns had the number five spot as an AFC wildcard team sewed up. But do they go for the whole thing and try and win the AFC North? I would go for the whole thing and try and win the AFC North. Yeah, injuries suck, and the Browns have you know, had more than their fair share amount of injuries this year. But at the same time, the Browns on the road are a whole different team than the Browns at home. And if you want to go to the playoffs, you want to just check the box, hey, we made the playoffs. Cool. Fresh starters. You want to compete in the playoffs? Well, that's got to happen in Cleveland. That's got to happen in front of the dog pound. That's got to happen in front of this fan base. So that means playing your guys in Week 18, trying to win the division. Oren Smith, do you think that injuries will come Miles Garrett's way? I sure fucking hope not, dude. <laughs> I mean, he's already kind of dealing with an injury. Uh, he suffered that shoulder injury, right, back in the Broncos game and didn't record a single stat or anything in the Rams game afterward. And he definitely got a little bit more going in the Jags game, but I, I think no one is safe from injuries. Like I always thought, listen, in the NFL, there just are certain guys who are Ironmen, and they don't get injured, right? They don't go on season-ending injuries. I thought Nick Chubb was one of those guys. And then we saw Chubb go. And that was like one of those eye-opening moments like, dude, no one is safe. Like, anyone can go down with a season-ending injury. So... I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that Miles Garrett will stay healthy the rest of the season. All right, before we get on to the rest of today's show, I do want to highlight our terrific sponsor, which is Waterboy. Holidays are here, and Waterboy is here to help you prepare for those nasty holiday hangovers. There's nothing worse than feeling like the Grinch while everyone else in the family is rocking around the Christmas tree. Waterboy is a hydration powder scientifically formulated to cut your hangover time in half. There are other hydration packs on the market, but nothing comes close anywhere anything anywhere close to fighting those Sunday scaries like Waterboy. Maybe the best part about Waterboy, by the way, is how amazing it tastes. 
Their most popular flavors include strawberry, lemonade, lemon lime, and blue raspberry. You're actually going to want to drink these. Hundreds of thousands of people already trust Waterboy as their hangover cure. It's time to stop dealing with the anxiety alone. For a limited time, my listeners get an exclusive 15% off discount with our link at waterboy.com slash chat sports. That's 15% off at waterboy forward slash chat sports. It's time to ho-ho hydrate this holiday season. And because I love you guys so much, I put that link to make it easy on you in the comments and description of today's show. But don't be the guy who's the Grinch and hung over the day after Christmas or so. No, fuel up with Waterboy at waterboy.com slash chat sports. Ken G, longtime viewer of the channel. What's going on, man? Does Stefanski win Coach of the Year if the Browns go deep in the playoffs? Coach of the Year is a regular season award, so it's not going to have any impact on that. I think if you're looking at Coach of the Year right now, the big name like a week ago or so were Dan Campbell and Mike McDaniel. Dan Campbell just lost to the Bears. Mike McDaniel just lost to the Titans. Kevin Stefanski is at 8-5, and and he's missing starters all over the field, including his quarterback, his running back, his left tackle, his right tackle, his backup right tackle, and I haven't even talked about the defense yet. So, call me biased. If Kevin Stefanski can get this injury-plagued team to 10 wins this year, I would say that was the best coaching job. Put Dan Campbell, put Mike McDaniel in Kevin Stefanski's shoes, they don't get to 10 wins. I don't believe they do. But Kevin Stefanski is doing an incredible job. So I think regardless of the playoffs, if he can get this team to 10-7 and with all the injuries they sustained, I mean, that's not just limping into the playoffs. That's winning 10 games. That's not getting the seven seed. I'm talking to me about even winning the division with 10 games. I, well, well, probably not the division, actually. Ravens have 10 already. But still, getting a lot of wins. Lil Beam, what would it cost to bring back Harrison Bryant and Jordan Elliott? Harrison Bryant's probably going to get a one-year, $3 million contract. Jordan Elliott's going to sign a similar deal like Taven Bryant signed with the Browns, which... Off the top of my head, Taven Bryan signed like a, a one-year $5 million contract. Let me see what Taven Bryan signed. Because I think uh, those two are in similar spots, although Elliott's playing a lot better right now than what um, Taven Bryan was doing his last year in Jacksonville. Taven Bryan, his last year with the Jags, well, he just signed a one-year $3.5 million contract. He signed a one-year $4 million deal with the Browns. So. I think Elliott will probably get about four, maybe four and a half if he's really lucky. Bryant's going to get one year, three to four million dollars, which are both feasible for Cleveland. Joshua Miller, what tackles are out there now that we can work out and possibly sign one or two? Can't lose another tackle. There's definitely an injury, right? An injury problem for the Browns right now. Off the top of my head, Leo Collins, who is historically a right tackle. Well, you kind of need a right tackle because James Hudson. It is awful. Uh, he has played the worst football of any tackle so far this year. Um, that's about it. Like, there's some other names that you've probably never heard of, and I'm sure the Browns will bring some of these guys in for a workout, but pretending, uh, potentially by the time you're watching this, they've already brought someone in, and maybe they've already signed someone, but Lyle Collins would be my number one target if I'm the Browns. Shane Falco, bring back Joe Flacco in 2024. I don't think so. I, I'm going to let this high ride the rest of the way, and I don't want to have that great 2023 season spoiled by going not going out well on top. So I'm very content with rolling the back next year with Sean Watson and Dorian Thompson Robinson as your quarterback room. I'm not going to panic on Watson, and I'm not going to punt on DTR after his rookie season when, honestly, he got better as the season went along. So I think he can improve going into year two. But let me know. Should the Browns bring back Joe Flacco in 2024? Type R for return. Type W for let him walk. I think we'll have a better answer when the season is over. But right now, I'm okay with going with Watson and DTR and some other QB to add to your practice squad. James Lehman, do you think Aaron Rodgers will play against the Browns in Week 17? I don't. I just don't think the Jets are going to be in contention. Uh, I, I think the Jets are 
right where they were last year, right? And we, the, the Jets last year, after week 14, had seven wins. They ended the season with seven wins. So good for them for beating the Texans, but no. I don't think Rodgers was ever all that serious about coming back. I think Rodgers just kind of wanted to prove that, and you might know why, science is not always right. Tim Harsh, next one up, dude. What's your favorite Christmas movie not titled Die Hard? Favorite Christmas movie not titled Die Hard. I mean, Christmas Vacation's definitely up there. Um, Jingle All the Way is a sneaky good movie. And there's one with Matthew Broderick that I like a lot, but the name is escaping me at the moment. Um, Deck the Halls. So those are like Jingle All the Way and Deck the Halls are two of my favorite ones. And then I love Christmas Vacation. Brownstown, Petey or Petty, who do you think winning the national championship for college? So part of me thinks Nick Saban's just going to casually win a natty because it's Nick Saban. That's what he does. And I remember in October or September even saying that. And I was looked at crazy after the Texas game. And I was like, hey, as a Tennessee fan, I have been down this road before where Bama might not look like usual Bama. And then they waltz into the national championship game. So I think Bama's going to take down Michigan, but I think Michigan's the better team. And then on the other side, I think we're going to see Washington beat Texas. I think everyone's picking Texas because it's Texas. And Washington's not usually a player in the college football realm. But I think Washington's a really good team. Like if Michael Penix was an SEC quarterback this year, he would have won a lot of Heisman. But an undefeated SEC QB with similar stats to Jaden Daniels, so I think we're going to see Alabama-Washington in the championship. And it's probably going to be Bama. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate everyone who carves out time of their day to come hang out with us here at the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already.